Welcome to the ecology unit. This is our final unit of the school year. It should also prove to be one of the most fun. What exactly is ecology? Well, ecology is the study of interactions of organisms with one another and with their environment. A lot of the foundational knowledge that you will need to know for this unit was learned in the climate unit. In this unit, we're going to specifically be looking at the San Francisco estuary ecosystem. So the ecology that we're going to be studying is quite literally your backyard. An ecosystem is a self-sustaining collection of organisms and their environment. An estuary is a partially enclosed body of water where fresh river water meets and mixes with salty ocean water. This is exactly what San Francisco Bay is. Fresh water from the second mountain delta flows through the rivers and meets with salty ocean water in the San Francisco Bay. And here is our beautiful bay. Why should we care about the ecology of the San Francisco Bay? Why are we going to spend the last six weeks of school learning about the San Francisco Bay? There are many reasons why. The wetlands that surround the San Francisco Bay filter toxic pollution and excess nutrient runoff. Additionally, they provide essential wildlife habitat and act as a natural flood control. In acting as a natural flood control, the wetlands are preventing shoreline erosion and also recharging our groundwater. Our wetlands form the foundation of the bay's food chain. Plants are the foundation of any food chain, and the wetlands are where the plants of the San Francisco ecosystem are found. They also provide recreational and educational opportunities. There's a lot of fishing that can be done in the wetlands, um, and also there's quite a bit to learn about them. Here are images of different organisms that we find in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, pelicans, egrets, mussels, clams, uh, stingrays. This is a leopard shark. And then these are some of the plants that are found in the San Francisco Bay uh, in the wetlands. Uh, these are two other organisms that are found um, in and around the San Francisco Bay. Um, this is a human, obviously fishing. The fish that this gentleman is holding is known as a halibut. Uh, halibut actually live on the bottom of our bay. They're uh, tasty and fascinating creatures. They are born with eyes on either side of their head. And then during um, development, during maturity, their um, eyes actually migrate to the same side of their head so that they can lie flat on the bottom of the bay and look directly up. The side of the fish that you are seeing is brown. The reason for this is that allows the fish to be camouflaged with the mud at the bottom of the bay. If you were to see the other side of this halibut, it would be completely white. Alright, ABCs of ecology. The A is for abiotic, which are all the non-living aspects of our ecosystem, things like rocks and mud and water. The B stands for all of the biotic or living parts of the ecosystem. So the organisms that I just showed you um, pictures of. And then also the C stands for cultural humans and the impact that we have on the ecosystem, which we'll be learning about throughout this unit. So some abiotic or non-living factors include temperature, water, which is essential to all life on Earth, sunlight, which is also vitally essential to all life on Earth. Sunlight is the energy in the form of solar radiation uh, that travels via electromagnetic waves to reach the surface of our Earth. And that energy is what drives nearly all ecosystems because plants use that energy in order to photosynthesize. And without plants, we would have no food chain. 
uh, salinity, which is the amount of dissolved salt. Um, it varies depending on the location in an estuary. Um, the percentage of salt in ocean water is about 3%. Um, in estuaries, um, it can be higher, especially in areas where water tends to move less because the salt can build up. Wind rocks soil. Uh, catastrophes such as earthquakes, fires, floods, landslides, uh, toxic spills like the oil that spilled in the San Francisco Bay when um, a barge hit the Bay Bridge a few years back it was not good at all for uh, any of the living organisms uh, in the Bay or surrounding the Bay. So these are all abiotic or non-living factors of the San Francisco Bay. Let's talk about some of the biotic or living factors, the plants and animals. Um, there are aquatic plants and animals, meaning that they live in the water. There are benthic, which are bottom dwelling. So the picture of the halibut that I showed you earlier, halibut are benthic organisms. They live on the bottom of the bay. Uh, and then there are the terrestrial or the land dwelling. Um, land dwelling terrestrial such as you and me, um, many birds, squirrels, deer, etc. Um, organisms are classified as the following. There are producers, which are organisms that make their own food. They're known as autotrophic. Um, and in this image, you see diatoms at the top right here. Diatoms do make their own food. And then there are the consumers that have to consume other organisms in order to receive the nutrients that they need. So obviously, you and I are consumers. There are three different types. Um, there are herbivores, which eat only plants. Uh, there are omnivores, which eat both plants and animals. And then there are carnivores, which eat um only meat. So humans have evolved to be omnivores, to eat both plants and animals. Some humans choose to be herbivores, and some humans actually choose to be carnivores, which isn't the most healthy. And then finally, there are the decomposers, which are essential because they are the ones that are breaking down dead organisms and returning the nutrients to the nutrient cycles that we learned about in the climate unit. So decomposers are organisms that obtain their energy from non-living organic matter. Um, and what you're seeing in this image here, uh, this is a uh, sea cucumber. They are one of my favorite organisms in the San Francisco Bay. If you've ever been to the Monterey Bay Aquarium or the California Academy of Science, you may have had a chance to actually pet one of these little creatures. Um, they can be quite soft and gooey feeling. All right, so where does all of the energy in our ecosystem come from? All organisms require energy in order to survive. It's one of the characteristics of life, one of the five characteristics of life. Food represents that energy. So the currency of any ecosystem is food. Food webs are diagrams that illustrate the flow of energy through an ecosystem. We're going to talk all about those. A food web is composed of many food chains. So a food chain is very linear. It's energy moving from one organism to the next organism to the next organism. A food chain is much more dynamic. And we're going to look at an example, of course. So a food chain versus a food web. And we are going to examine trophic levels. These are going to be the trophic levels. And in any food chain, we always start with our source, which is the sun. We then move up our food web to the producers, which in this case are algae and diatoms. And remember that producers are autotrophic. After the producers are the first consumers, and in this case we have copepods and shrimp, and then we have second consumers, which are ducks. Now in this, this is this whole image here, this is a food web. 
But in this food web are food chains. So our, in our first food chain, we move from the sun to diatoms. From diatoms, we move to copepods. 